After World War II, Americans were fearful that the Communists had infiltrated America. The Soviets had come to dominate Eastern Europe with the Communist bloc. China and North Korea had fallen to Communism rather easily. And most of all, the Soviets had also developed an atomic bomb by stealing United States secrets. Americans were outraged that the Soviets had put spies in the US State Department and stolen our secrets. All of these things lead to McCarthyism. Headed by Republican Senator Joseph McCarthy, McCarthyism was a witch hunt to root out suspected communists in America by accusing them without hard evidence. Today the most dangerous enemy agent is not so much concerned with the secret information about weapons as he is with infiltrating the necessary departments of the government and shaping and controlling the actions of our nation. Millions of Americans were investigated and their reputations were ruined. And once investigated, they were forced to take loyalty oaths. Americans' civil liberties were violated. The freedom of speech was trampled and Americans were afraid to speak out due to paranoia. By 1947, communist paranoia in the United States government ran rampant. In response, President Truman and Congress created two agencies to investigate. The first was the Loyalty Review Board. It investigated the backgrounds of federal employees for any suspicious pasts. 3,000 Americans were fired or forced to resign from their government positions without any hard evidence to convict them because they were deemed risks to national security. The president also authorized HUAC. HUAC was the House Un-American Activities Committee, and this left the biggest impact on McCarthyism. HUAC made itself famous by going after communist subversion in the film industry. It believed that communists in Hollywood were sneaking propaganda into movies. HUAC subpoenaed 43 different witnesses from the film industry, or called them in to testify before Congress on this matter. 33 of these witnesses were actors, writers, directors, and producers who were friendly to the committee and gave testimony freely. However, 10 of the witnesses refused to testify before Congress because they felt that their rights were being violated. This group became known as the Hollywood 10, and they were put in jail for ignoring orders of Congress. The Hollywood 10 were supported by many of their colleagues, but most famously, two of the biggest stars of the day, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Acts were also taken that persecuted citizens and trampled on their rights. With communist paranoia at a fever pitch, the witch hunt intensified. Hollywood executives enacted a blacklist in the industry. This was a list of 500 suspected communists that were actors and writers, which denied them work and ruined their careers. The McCarran Act was a law that made it illegal to plan any action that could depose the government. This act was similar to the Sedition Act of World War I. This violated people's First Amendment rights to freedom of speech. Adding to the communist paranoia were two cases of Soviet spies in the United States. The first case was Alger Hiss. In 1948, Hiss was arrested on suspicion of stealing government documents for the Soviets. Unable to charge him with spying, Hiss is convicted of perjury or lying under oath, and he was imprisoned. The probe into Alger Hiss was led by Richard Nixon. This case boosted Nixon into national fame. Another case was with Ethel and Julius Rosenberg. They were convicted of giving the Soviets U.S. atomic plans. These Jewish American citizens were then executed by electric chair. But by the early 1950s, McCarthyism was losing steam and Americans were growing tired of the paranoia. In 1954, Joseph McCarthy claimed to have the names of 200 Soviet spies in the U.S. State Department. He made wild accusations on television and harassed and bullied witnesses before Congress. The American public turned on Joseph McCarthy and the U.S. Senate officially censured or reprimanded him for misconduct. McCarthy faded away as a disgraced man and the witch hunts died off. Still, the anti-communist sentiment continued, but with less intensity. States passed laws limiting speech, books were banned, and people were questioned. Unable to deal with his disgrace, Joseph McCarthy fell into alcoholism and died before the end of the decade. Throughout the 40 years of the Cold War, anti-communist sentiment in the United States would heat up and cool down from time to time, but it would never again reach the intensity that it did during the McCarthyist age. Still, the question remains, does the United States government have a right to ask you what your political beliefs are? And if you are a communist in America, does it matter today? These are important questions raised by the McCarthyist movement.